In the last video, we described the devastating consequences of infective endocarditis. Naturally, you're asking, can we prevent this disease? Originally, it was thought that a single dose of antibiotic would clear bacteria from the bloodstream and prevent them from reaching the NBTE. And at one time, anyone with a significant murmur heard on exam was recommended to receive antibiotics for nearly all dental procedures. However, investigations into the causes of transient bacteremia revealed a startling reality. Multiple activities associated with daily life cause bacteremia. In addition to dental extraction and periodontal surgery, chewing gum, brushing your teeth, or using an oral irrigation device frequently cause bacteremia. It was also found, contrary to conventional wisdom, that there was no relationship between the bleeding of a, of a dental procedure and bacteremia. Studies also revealed that antibiotics given in anticipation of bacteremia did not reduce the level of bacteremia, but rather killed bacteria after they adhered to the NBTE. Experts trying to develop the guidelines for prophylaxis realized that the cumulative exposure is often hundreds of times greater uh, during daily life than a single dental procedure. The efficacy of prophylaxis has never been proven because the risk of one dental procedure causing endocarditis has been estimated to be 1 in 400. To prove efficacy would require a huge study. And who would agree to be in the placebo group? The most recent American Heart Association guidelines from Circulation 2007 recommend prophylaxis for only certain dental procedures, extractions, and gingival surgery, which are at high risk for bacteremia, as well as tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy but not for patients who undergo GI or GU procedures unless they have a pre-existing underlying infection and targeted antibiotic therapy for treatment should begin prior to and during an invasive GI or GU procedure. The recommended regimen for dental procedures is amoxicillin two grams orally one hour before the procedure to maximize the serum levels at the time of the procedure. This regimen should only be administered to patients at high risk for an adverse outcome from endocarditis. That is, patients who have a prosthetic valve, a history of prior endocarditis, cyanotic heart disease, or have cardiac transplant valvulopathy. Why has the AA American Heart Association reduced the use of prophylactic antibiotics because they have wisely balanced the risk versus benefits. The risks are well known, allergic reactions and C. difficile colitis, a disease that can be precipitated by a single dose of antibiotics. Some dentists continue to use prophylaxis on patients who do not fall into these high-risk groups. Why? Could it be fear of a malpractice suit? They don't seem to realize that using an unnecessary treatment that results in a serious side effect could be grounds for litigation. We all need to be more judici judicious in our use of antibiotics. Clinical investigators agree that good dental hygiene and regular visits to the dentist are the most effective way to prevent infective endocarditis. Now let me review a summary of the five videos on infective endocarditis. First, infective endocarditis usually requires the formation of an NBTE except for Staph aureus, which can attack normal valves. The organisms that cause infective endocarditis have high levels of adherence. Unfortunately, the clinical symptoms of infective endocarditis are nonspecific remember to always look for embolic lesions. When diagnosing endocarditis, remember to use the modified Duke criteria, 
and we emphasize the importance of timed blood cultures to document constant bacteremia and the use of cardiac echo, TTE and TEE, to demonstrate vegetations, valve dysfunction, and myocardial abscesses. Because the environment of the vegetation is privileged and the number of bacteria is extremely large, prolonged high-dose cytal antibiotics are required for treatment. Recognizing the benefits of valve replacement to control sepsis and prevent irreversible congestive heart failure, we must have a low threshold for surgery. Mortality from this disease remains high. However, prevention by administering prophylaxis, prophylactic antibiotics is of questionable benefit, but recommended in high-risk patients. And now you too are an expert in diagnosing and managing infective endocarditis. And I look forward to you applying these principles to patients in your practice. Thank you.